Welcome back. Today on our journey through the Bible, we will learn about Jesus' suffering and death. loves me the Bible tells me so the Messiah our memory verse comes from Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty God the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The Death The theme verse for this aspect of the Messiah's life comes from Isaiah 53, verse 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. Anointing Betrayal The chief priests and the elders of the Jews made plans to kill Jesus, but they decided to wait until after the Passover and Feast of Unleavened Bread had ended, to prevent an uproar from the people. About six days before the Passover, Jesus and the apostles were in Bethany for a feast hosted by Simon, a man Jesus had healed from leprosy. The feast was in honor of Lazarus' resurrection, and Martha had prepared a meal to serve. While at the feast, Mary brought a very expensive box of spikenard ointment and anointed Jesus' head and feet, wiping his feet with her hair. The perfume filled the whole house with its smell. Some at the feast were annoyed by this spectacle and excess. Judas Iscariot complained that the ointment could have been sold and the money given to the poor. Not that he was so concerned for the poor, but because he loved money and was a thief. Jesus told all of them to leave Mary alone because she was doing a kindness for his burial. He reminded them that the poor would always be with them and they could do good to them anytime but he, Jesus, would not always be there with them. Following this feast, Judas Iscariot went to the chief priests and made a deal with them. He would betray Jesus to them. The priests were very glad and promised to pay him money, 30 pieces of silver, for the deed. From that point on, Judas looked for the best time to fulfill his betrayal. Triumphal Entry Jesus and the Apostles were on their way toward Jerusalem near the time of the Passover feast. When they arrived in Bethphage, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of the Apostles on a mission. He sent them into the next village. He told them that when they arrived there, they would find a donkey and her colt tied up. He instructed them to untie the animals and bring the colt to him. He also told them if anyone asked them why they were loosing the colt, they were to respond that the Lord hath need of him. To which he said the inquirer would respond by sending them right away. The disciples obeyed and found all just as Jesus had said. This colt was needed that the prophecy of Zechariah would be fulfilled. Behold! thy king cometh unto thee, upon a colt the foal of an ass. This colt had never had a rider before, but under the power of Jesus he carried him into Jerusalem smoothly. All the people of the city, hearing that Jesus was coming into the city, rejoiced in the streets, some laying their clothes and others' palm branches down in Jesus' path, saying, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Pharisees that were there were 
utterly displeased with this display. They asked Jesus to quiet the people. To this request, Jesus replied, I tell you that if they should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Following the excitement of Jesus' procession into Jerusalem, Jesus looked over the city and was very sad. He cried over the city because he saw the destruction and desolation that would come to the city and its inhabitants who would not believe. Then Jesus went into the temple where the animal salespeople and money changers were engaging in a cacophony of merchandise. This brought Jesus to the limit. He overturned their tables and drove out the salespeople saying, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. After clearing the temple, Jesus healed the blind and the crippled who came to him in the temple, and the children shouted for joy, Hosanna to the son of David! Jesus' command and authority and the children's chorus left the chief priests and scribes in astonishment, and they asked Jesus if he heard what they were saying. Jesus responded that out of the mouth of babes thou hast perfected praise. Jesus' Last Passover On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Jesus sent Peter and John into Jerusalem. He told them they would find a man carrying a pitcher of water, and they should give him this message. The Master saith, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. The disciples did as Jesus instructed, and the man took them to a large furnished upper room in his home, where the disciples made preparations for the Passover feast. That evening, Jesus and his disciples assembled in the upper room for the feast. When they all sat down to eat, Jesus told the twelve disciples that he had looked forward to eating the Passover with them, because this would be his last time before his suffering. The disciples did not understand what Jesus meant by his suffering. They still believed in the earthly kingdom, despite all Jesus had been teaching. Jesus took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Then Jesus took the cup with the grape juice, and also gave thanks for it, and said to the disciples, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. He said he would not partake of the fruit of the vine until he would drink it with the disciples in heaven. While they were eating, Jesus told the twelve disciples that one of them had betrayed him. The disciples could not fathom that one of their number would or even could do such a thing. They each inquired if it was himself. When Judas asked, Master, is it I? Jesus responded, Thou hast said. After they had eaten, Jesus took off his outer garments and took a towel, poured water, and began to wash the disciples' feet. Peter didn't understand what Jesus was doing and refused having his feet washed by Jesus. Jesus told him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Then Simon requested that Jesus not only wash his feet, but his head and hands also. To this request, Jesus replied, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. Then Jesus told the disciples that he, being their Lord and Master, just washed their feet as an example. Therefore, as his servants, they are also to wash each other's feet as well. Jesus, being distressed, again reminded them that one of their number would betray him. John, at Peter's prompting, asked Jesus who was the man. Jesus said, 
he it is to whom I shall give sop when I have dipped it. When Jesus dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, and when he ate it, Satan entered him. Jesus told him, That thou doest, do quickly. Judas then left immediately after eating, into the night. None of the other disciples made the connection of what had occurred. Because Judas was responsible for their money, they thought that Jesus had sent him to buy supplies or take a donation to the poor. Jesus again reminded them of his impending death, resurrection, and subsequent departure. He also reminded them of his sure return. Jesus prayed for himself, the disciples then, and those that would believe on him in the future. He also warned the disciples that they would all be offended because of him that night, to which Peter responded, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Then Jesus said to Peter with pity, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. Then Jesus continued saying to Peter, When thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Then Peter responded to Jesus saying, that he was ready to go with Jesus both to prison and to death. To this, Jesus told Peter that before the rooster could crow twice that day, he would deny even knowing Jesus three times. Now it's time for our activity. First question, who anointed Jesus for his death? That's correct, Mary Magdalene did at Simon's feast with spikenard oil. Next question, who betrayed Jesus? That's correct, Judas Iscariot did. He was one of the 12 apostles. Next question, what was thrown on the path before Jesus during his triumphal entry? That's correct, palm branches and clothing. Last question, what did the unleavened bread and the grape juice represent? That's right, the unleavened bread represented Jesus's body that was broken for us and the grape juice represented his blood that is spilled for us. Now, write or say the memory and theme verses from memory. Yes, Jesus loves Next time, we'll read yes, about the beginning Jesus of Jesus' suffering. Me. Yes, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so.